Hello, good evening. Good evening. You're welcome to today's um, Forex Trade Plan Review for the 4th of November 2019 with Free Uh If you can hear me, please type in. If you can hear me clearly and see my screen, please type in yes. If you can hear me clearly and see my screen, please type in yes. Okay. Okay, thank you all for coming. So that was too much of your time. I'm 10 minutes late. Let me start off so that I can quickly cover all we have. So starting this week, this week we have a lot of high impact news. Let me check my filter. Okay, let me put medium impact. See if we get okay. We have lots of high impact news this week, especially for the British pound. Starting from um, Tuesday, we have uh, Republic Bank of Australia rate statement. That's by 4.30 a.m. West African time. It's high impact. Then we have um, 2.30 p.m. card trade balance. That's on Tuesday. Then 4 p.m. we have um, U.S. non-manufacturing PMI. Then by 10.45, we have unemployment change and unemployment rate for New Zealand. Then by 7, by on Thursday, we have high impact news expected for the British pound. I have a feeling this is the news the pound has been waiting for to decide its direction, especially for the Euro GBP. So that's out of the way. Let's get down to business for today. So looking at our chat, um, I was testing out this um, dark screen. So just please bear with me. Please bear with me. I was testing out this dark screen. Just trying to find out how it looks like. Okay, so as always, we start with the dollar index. Start with the dollar index to give us an idea of how the market closed and what we are most likely expecting. So uh, looking at the dollar index, from a daily point of view, it's at this prior low here, at this prior low at this point. So let's look at it from the weekly. If we look at it from the weekly, still some distance this weekly low here as uh, this candle here the low might act as support because if you look at it on the daily price is at that point as where price is practically at at this point so now let's go down to our intraday to get an idea of how we tend to look at this so basically where go where the dollar index is and that zone is between 97.14 to 97.02. Should this zone hold as support, you might see a bounce on the dollar index, probably to this resistance zone here or this falling trend line on the former. But should they break below, as if you're also aware, let me switch to the daily. There's a trend line, support trend line on the daily that you need to be aware of also. my network is taking its time so this trend line the trend line is running all the way from this point to this point and it's close by here so like i said sometime last week on the usd card the dollar index may likely try to run into this zone tap this trend line and bounce back up so that is it for the dollar index so the next pair we'll be looking at is the gold and looking at gold from a daily point of view 
I can see it's at this cluster of um, resistance area. Now let's look at it from the weekly. If we look at it from the weekly, there is something not so obvious. But if you look at this candle here, this candle here, price has been within his range for almost one, two, three, four. Four weeks, if you count the beginning of this week, it will make it five. And if you switch back that candle high, excuse me, let me get rid of all this. That candle high is coming in at, um, that candle high is coming in at, The candle high, the high of that candle is coming in somewhere here. Let me get the precise value here. And that's at 15, 1967. So this area, a break above this area, and you might see price head up to 15.35. That's it for gold. So let's look at how that area is looking like on our intraday chart. So remember the level, the level is 15, 1967. That's that weekly high. So, 15. so it's somewhere here. That high is somewhere here. That's this high here. That's this weekly high, 15, 1967. So let's put it in here. Somewhere here. And if you look to your left, it tallies with this area. So, knowing what gold can do, you might see gold spike into here. So, if it spikes into here and stays above 15, 16, 02, it may move up to this trend line. Now, where is this trend line coming from? Let's look at this. The trend line is a channel. Is the top part of a channel. So you might see price try to rally towards it. So that's just it for gold. As long as gold stays below 15.19 to 15.16.02, you might see drop lower. It might, because you have support here. You have a support here. So if it closes below this level, then you may see further weakness on gold. And there is also a rising support trend line you can see this point this point false break here and back up so that's it for gold gold is more like in a sideways move it's now currently at the upper part of the range so you need to be aware of that for gold so the next way we're going to look at is the USACHF. so looking at the USACHF, now this is interesting this is interesting this is pretty interesting. If we look at USDCHF on the weekly, these two moving averages, this is um, 100 SME, and this is 200 SME. The gold is sitting, the USDCHF is sitting above the two on the weekly time frame. And as you can see, the 100 seems to be giving it support. The moving averages on higher time frames are very, very powerful dynamic areas of support and resistance. So you need to be pretty, pretty much aware of where price is on a higher time frame. So if we come into the Euro USD, that area is somewhere here. Let's get the value from the daily time frame. So that value is coming in at uh, 98.50 to 98.57. So let's use something to mark it up mark it up okay so this is what we have on this pair so as you can see where the usd thf is and if you look to your left there is a value area here and price is just above that zone on the daily time frame so when we go to our intraday chart, that's what we have here. So if price stays above this zone, that is 
56 to 843. You might see it move higher. So if it moves above this area that rejected it, then we may see price come back to this place. But from what I see price is on the weekly, you might see a little bit of a bounce. You might see a little bit of a bounce because it's coming into a zone area here on the day. So, and if you look to the left, this first support, second support. So that's it for the um, USDCHF. So the USDCHF for now sitting above support, except a break below, a break below, and there's a falling trend line support from this point to this point. So if it clears this trend line, then you might see further weakness, but there are still some support levels down below for it. So you might either see a bounce from here or a kind of a range move because this area is the zone of the weekly moving averages. So you just need to know where they are to avoid stories that touch. So looking at the, looking at um, the USD, Euro USD, this week is closing a bit bullish, very, very bullish. Very, very bullish. And let's look at it from our intraday perspective. So, so looking at the Euro USD from our intraday perspective, there's a trend line here. That's this trend line here. Price is below it. Price is at a resistance structure. So now, if price gets this is the bottom line now, a close above 1.1179 will send price higher. But a close on the four hour below 1.1160, I see price move lower. As you can see, this seems to be like a kind of a range. So you need to know where your range top and range bottom is. So that's just what we have on the Euro USD. The pair seems to be a little bit to the top side, but that will depend on how the pair opens. So as you can see, there's a trend line here. The first touch got rejected. It's going in for the like almost fourth touch. So the next pair we're going to look at is uh, the Euro GBP. In my opinion, the Euro GBP is setting up for something. It's waiting for something, but Maybe this, um, the coming news, the coming um, rate news on the um, pound might be a decisive movement for it. Because if you look at this pair, on the weekly sitting above a support zone, then there is this trend line that is coming from May 2016, connecting somewhere here may 2019 so price has been sitting around that area and like i've been saying it's a trend line it seems to have broken it but it's not going lower so probably they are waiting for something what they're waiting for i don't know but the most important thing is if you see a sharp movement then that will basically give a decisive factor because for now the euro gbp is on status it is just whipsawing everywhere so you just need to be careful with this pair look for the range top area and the range lower areas because they are still being respected so that will guide you on a trade on this pair the same thing too with almost like the gbp us because like i always say the euro gbp to an extent determines how the gbp pairs would move most of the time so we have a range a trend line here trend line here of the weekly then if we go to the daily, we're looking like what looks like um, a double first touch. It hasn't yet touched there, but this might serve as kind of like a quasi double, but double top. So we go down to our intraday chart to get a better view of this. So looking at this pair, it's just most like in a range. There's a range top area here. And this looks like the range bottom here. If price stays above 1.2925, it might still try to tap this area. But a close below 1.2895 might see price move lower. So 
For now, this is the intermediate support area. And this is the resistance zone just above. So for now, if you ask me, GBP, GBP um, USD is not giving a clear directional bias. So if you're taking a trade on it, you just need to be very, very careful. The same setup you have on Euro GBP is what you have on the US uh, GBP CHF. So if you look at this pair now, it has rejected from its weekly 100, as weekly 100, and you see the way the 200 and the 100 SMEs are almost close back. So let's go back to our chart. The same setup, the same setup on the Euro GBP is the same setup here, as you can see consolidation and if you observe clearly it is between these daily candidates so as you can see for one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven trading days price has been consolidating within this candle so the best bet is to wait and see a breakout out of this zone and the zone is between let me get it properly let me get the zone properly the zone area is here, that's over here. This is a support area. That's between 21.26, 23. And the resistance area is coming in at um, 1.2896. So that's just basically, it's just ranging and it's not neat. It's just not neat. So I've been able to at least identify what looks like a resistance and a support structure. So you just need to find out where you are and then know how to pick your trade. So the next thing we're going to look at is GBP USD JPY. So looking at the USD JPY from the daily point of view, this is a bearish, very, very bearish close. Let's see how it looks like on the weekly. Bearish as well. Excuse me. It's a bearish weekly close as well. So we'll go down to the daily. So most times, and as you can see, the daily 55, what pair is it? Yes, that's a daily 55. The daily 55 moving average seems to be acting as support to price here. So you might see a little bit of a bounce to test this neckline here. Now, let me get the neckline properly. There's this neckline here. You might see a bit of a bounce to test this area. That's 108.41. And if you notice, that rhymes with the 50% of, um, I think, Thursday's drop. That will be 50% of Thursday's drop. So if we go down to our intraday chart, remember that level, that level is 108.41. That's somewhere here. Somewhere here. So price may get, if price runs in there and gets rejected, you might see a drop in price. But let's go down to our higher time frame. We have a rising trend line and we have a previously broken trend line which may act as support and if you look at them they're all lining up within here so if price clears this area to the downside so if you get the rejection from here then price may likely needs to clear this area to move lower because as you can see this trend line it tested the one so you might see price drop here break below here test this trend line and move back up so a break of this trend line and this previously broken trend line will give a directional bias. So if you ask me, the best bet is to wait for a sell rejection at 108.35 or much higher on this pair. So the next pair we're going to look at is Euro GBP. So looking at the Euro GBP, the same setup. But the deal with the Euro GBP is that it didn't break its own neckline. So now it's found support there. So we may see it rally a bit. So let's go down to the Euro GBP to find out what might happen. So the best deal on this pair is to wait for it here. There's this a channel. It's a kind of a falling channel. So it's just to wait for it at the top here or a rejection because it has two support zones just below it. 
the first one has held. So it might rally up a bit before dropping lower. But looking at the pair, this looks this is an inside an inside candle. So you might see a bit of a continuation before a drop lower. So that's what you need to be aware of this pair. Until the low of this bear, um, bearish anchor candle is taken out. The price might range in between here. As you can see what has happened here in previous times and this area. So it might rally up a bit. So the best bet is just to wait for it at the extreme so that you don't get caught in no man's land. So the next pair we're going to look at is um, pound yen. So looking at the pound yen, looking at the pound yen, it's almost the same setup. We can see sideways movement, nothing so flat. Sideways movement. So how do we trade that on the intraday? It's basically the same thing. You look for the extremes. This seems to be the support area, and this seems to be a plausible resistance area. So you wait for it as 140.46 to 140.75. Even if it comes in here, you need a close below 140.46 with price action to take a short position. If not, you might get trapped on this pair. And as you can see, we have a triangle. And if you look closely, price is ranging just within this four hour candle. Let's see if we can spot it on the daily. Yes, we can also spot it on the daily. This range here and here. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is a master candle. This will pass for a master candle. So a break below 138.90, 138.90 will be very, very bearish on this pair. That's like this, something like this. But a break above here might send it higher. So that's it just for this pair. Just seems to be in a range. But if you're trading it in Chadi, this shaded, this area, 139.49 to 139.69 seems to be a plausible support area. And this is an untested resistance there. So you watch to see what happens there. So the next pair we're going to look at is the AUD USD. So looking at the AUD USD, looking at the AUD USD, um, one, on this AUD USD, there's a falling channel. Excuse me, sorry. There is a falling channel. There is a previously broken, there's a neckline here. Let me remove all my moving average so that I can see clearly on this chart. So now the chart is clean. Price has broken this resistance area. But if you look to the left, there's a neckline here. And that is where it currently is at the moment. If I pull back my levels, you can see it's in that zone. That's where it's currently in at the moment. So how do we trade this on a lower time frame? Well, it has some support structure, as you can see. It has some support structure. It has tested this level once. Let me go down to the far. This area has acted as support previously so for this pair i'll say a break of this trend line might send it lower because where it is on the daily where it is on the daily you need a close above 69.29 to move higher and if you notice just slightly above this level is 69 is this trend line so basically for this pair to be completely bullish you need something like this then price will come towards this area here. Price will then head towards this. And you might see price head towards here. If not, most likely, you might see a continuation on to the downside. So for this pair to continue to the downside, you need a close below 68.65. Once you get the close below 68.65, then you might see a drop lower. But any of these levels above 
65 my dark path supports. So you can just use these levels. It's almost the same thing here. So the next pair we're going to look at is Euro AUD. So we can add the Euro AUD from the daily point of view. Like this. Well, if you notice on this pair, there is this anchor candle here. And there's one thing with anchor candles, the open price of a bullish anchor candle is always support. And that is coming in somewhere here. And then we have something else too. That's where price is sitting above. That's where price for now is physically sitting above as this zone here. So for this pair, it's sitting just above support. There is a greater tendency you might see a bounce on this pair. And remember, we have high impact. Aussie news coming in this week, read statement. Read statement is coming in. We have Friday and we have Tuesday. This read statement and the policy statement is coming in on Friday. So it might push the pair in either direction. So we just need to be a little bit aware of that. It's sitting currently at a support structure. So as long as this area holds, you might see a move higher on this pair. So the next way we're going to be looking at is the USD card. So looking at the USD card, just like I said last week. We can take from the daily point of view first. Looking at the USD card. Price from the trend line I posted, price moved up. So now price is above this neckline. As long as it stays above here, it has the potential to still move higher. Although there's a challenge here, it needs to take out this area to continue moving higher. So that's what we have here. And see, so as long as it stays above, um, uh, let me see this level now. I think it's uh, one, let's say 131.40 it has a potential to still move to the top side here so this is support zone between 131.43 and 131.23 so if it stays above this zone it's going to still move higher it will be completely bullish when you get a good close and retest of 132.34 that's here so for now the USD card is still tilted to the top side Probably it's just probably doing a retest of this area here. So you need to be careful. It's doing a retest of this here. So the next pair, final pair I'm going to look at is the NASDAQ 100. So looking at the NASDAQ, well, this pair, when people got into a sell on this pair, when it first broke the all time high, I think that was somewhere here. I was somewhere here, but as you can see, it broke it and it's using that area for support. Basically, basically, as far as my eyes can see, I'm not seeing any other high. So I just don't know for this bit. I can't see. All I know is that this area is holding, it might still move higher. That's 80.29, yeah. So it might still move higher. How high? I don't know. But this is just the structure you have on this pair. So if you get a brick below 79.66, then you might see it come down and that might signal weakness. But as long as it is above this trend line and 80.28, it has a potential to still reach for the roof. To still reach for the moon, let me use that term. Because I try to find out if I have a channel here, like in news, there's a rising trend line. There's a rising trend line from here, something like this. I use this channel to see if it's also. 
all things being equal, this might be his target. Give this channel food. This might just definitely be his target. So the Nasdaq is still in a bullish trend. So what you might most likely see tomorrow is something like this. Broken has broken this high. You might just see a pullback and then a move higher. So that is it for the currency outlook. So uh, thank you for taking your time to attend. And don't forget the six weeks masterclass registration for the month of November is still ongoing. If you have someone who's having a little bit of challenges still trading or who needs to learn and learn properly, let the person hit me up. Uh, my my let me pull up my social media handles. Just give me a few minutes. So if you have anybody that is still interested in taking the class or is having a little bit of challenges because the system I use here is what I basically teach in my master class. So these are my social media handles. This is my phone number. This is my Telegram handle. This is my IG page and this is my YouTube channel. So the person could give me a reach out on any of this and I'll be glad to pull the person through. So thank you all for coming. I wish you all a beautiful night's sleep, a blessed trading week ahead. Thank you all.